Here we go. All right. Welcome to Freedom Cast, brought to you by Freedom Fitness Equipment in Charlotte, North Carolina. This podcast is about transforming your life by staying active and having fun. I interview people who have built businesses around helping others get active, and we talk about how they got started and cover everything from food and nutrition to strength and conditioning to managing work life while maintaining their fitness goals. My hope is that this podcast inspires you to be a more active, awesome human. So to that end, this is the initial podcast episode. I have no idea what I'm doing, and I'm okay with that. But what I wanted to talk about is how I got started in this particular industry and um, the business that me and my family are in together. So I run a business called Freedom Fitness Equipment, and we're here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, We buy and sell used gym equipment right now, and the goal for us long term is to have our own product line and be able to offer you everything around being fit, getting active. Once you walk in our door, we offer everything from training and nutrition to used equipment, um, everything you would need to accomplish your fitness goals, whether it's weight loss, uh, gaining strength, uh, being more healthy, whatever it is, that's our goal. Um, I got into this industry because I was working a nine to five and to be perfectly honest, I was miserable. Um, I know if anybody from my former job is listening that this may come as a shock and a surprise, but there are certain industries that people just aren't cut out to be in. And I always felt just from the very beginning that I was meant to be an entrepreneur and I was meant to start my own business. I I saw it as a calling from God. I, I don't quite know how to describe that onset of that feeling, but it just has been slowly developing over time. And I'm, I'm super excited about what I'm doing now. Um, but it's been a long time coming. So, I'll give you a little bit about my background. So I started out, you know, first job was, I think it was a lifeguard. I did that for a few years, just tending to pools. I didn't really jump up the ladder in terms of going from a lifeguard to a manager or anything like that. But I I did enjoy that job, got to, you know, oversee, you know, people at different pools in the area. Um, from there worked in retail and customer service, you know, at, uh, uh, one of the local local grocery stores here, um, got into the pharmacy, um, worked at my school in the pharmacy. Uh, I've worked for a law office. I've done a bunch. I did a bunch of different part-time jobs, especially over the summer, uh, while I was in school, both in high school and in college. Um, So I was always doing different things and always interested in different things. And I like to hustle. Uh, There was one time where I got involved with a group that would buy back textbooks from uh, campus stores. And I actually remember that I had, I I was called and caught by campus security because I was doing transactions on campus. And at the time they had a contract with one of the major book distributors in the area um, to, or textbook buyback Distri- uh, buyback businesses in the area um, that they, they had sc- exclusive rights on campus to buy back textbooks. And so I, nobody else could be on campus doing that. And I was, and, and I, I totally got caught and I had somebody follow me around and I also had somebody uh, track me down to my car and ask me what I was doing. Um, I had, uh, you know, it was campus security or somebody from the legal office call me. So it was a wild, wild experience, but I I always, you know, enjoyed the side hustle and doing that, you know, part time. Uh, From there, I jumped straight into technology. Um, I worked for one of the major, major financial services businesses uh, in the area. Um, I won't name names right now, but um, uh, you know, they were good to me. Um, And I started as an intern 
Um, I got that job almost as a mistake, so I'll explain that here in a minute, but I, I progressed from intern to full-time associate where we did a rotational program and from there into technology and then into product management. Um, I started that job, like I mentioned, almost as a mistake. So I applied to the role, which I thought was an internship role. And I, I think how this happened is, I believe I applied to two positions. I believe I applied both to the internship as well as the full-time position that was available at that organization for a rotational program within technology. So I was when I was interviewed, I never asked about this, but you know, I, I thought I was interviewing for the internship. And as I progressed through the, the interview process, I thought, man, this whole thing is really intense. They had you know, on-site interviews at campus, at our college, and then they had you come in and they had you do full rounds of interviews all day, four in the morning, four in the afternoon. And then I got a call a few weeks later saying, hey, we'd love to have you. Here's your benefits package. Here's your salary. Um, you know, hear your rough hours and that kind of thing. And I said, okay, great, but you understand I'm still in school. And so they went, oh, we may have made a mistake. Um, let's get back to you on that. During the interview process, I had stated that I still had a year left of school. Nobody said anything about it. So, so I get a call back and they say, look, it looks like we made a mistake. We actually interviewed you for a full-time position. Here, we'll, we'll plug you into their inter our internship program over the summer. And so I ended up doing that in technology and I started out doing content management. Anyway, all that to say, I eventually worked my way up in the organization to the product management space. And I just realized at a certain point, and I've told other people this before, you can only influence so much even on the business side. I thought in technology I was gonna be able to change a system and create real change from the ground up. And then when I found out that didn't work, I thought I could change it on the business side. And so when I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast that I'm all about transforming people's lives and helping the people to be active, it's really because I think that concept probably started when I first got a full-time job is I really wanna transform the way things are done and transform whatever it is, the business, in a different direction. And so when I got frustrated because I wasn't really able to do that on the technology side, I went over to the business to try to see if I could fix it there, and I still couldn't do that well enough. And so um, I just started, I decided that I should start my own business. And so we've now been doing this for, oh goodness, almost a year now, uh, me and my wife. Um, I run the operations side, she runs the, the books, and we've really been enjoying the ride. And so we buy and sell fitness equipment, that's our main business, and like I said, the long-term goal is to really have a, a meaningful impact on the way people view fitness and how the equipment that we sell, what, what it can do for people, how it can transform their, the way they live. It, we don't wanna just sell you a bar. We want to sell you on or, or help you with weight loss or getting stronger or being a better athlete um, or, or just being able to walk your dog in the morning without pain, um, being able to be active with your kids, you know, like that kind of common sense, just every man perspective um, on fitness, really. So... That's our passion, um, that's my passion, and that's kind of why I started the, the business. I'm gonna talk a little bit about coronavirus too because some of you I'm sure are thinking, well, if you started less than a year ago, I'm sure you were doing really, really well, and maybe you started for just the money and because that is at the same time was when you know the coronavirus pandemic started. And yes, I mean, we, we started reselling out of our home I don't know, like I said, about a year ago and buying and selling fitness equipment and found that that was a good business to be in at the time and it only got stronger. But I've been weightlifting for 15 years and my, my wife has almost been in that as long as I have. And it was just something that really spoke to both of us in terms of what you could be 
you know, I'm a naturally thin, skinny individual. So I'm into powerlifting right now and putting on muscle, just getting stronger. And uh, it just really changes who you are and how you interact with people being in that business. Um, I've gotten to meet a lot of really great, not only business owners, but just clients, uh, people who are personal trainers, um, who are outfitting their facilities, all different sides of that coin. And it's really interesting for me hearing their stories. I just talked to a gentleman the other day who runs a a gym out in uh, Albemarle, North Carolina. He used to be a semi-professional, professional bodybuilder. We'll probably interview him for this podcast. And I don't know, just the story he was telling around how much debt he gone into, how he really didn't like that, how he went about changing the way his life was structured in order to reduce the debt, um, how he just absolutely killed it for 10 or 15 or 20 years in that industry and in that business to get where he was. Um, that really spoke to me. Um, and so I, I love talking with people like that because there seems to be a common thread in the fitness industry of people just doing this and transforming their life. So um, that's really exciting. And it's fun to talk about. So I'm hoping that this podcast can really uh, inspire people, um, help you guys get more active. Um, my goal as a retailer uh, in in my business is to help you accomplish your goals. And it's not just to make a quick buck. Um, I think that's a really short-term perspective, and I wish I wish fewer people would think about it that way. You can become a millionaire by uh, making a quick buck overnight, as we've learned from Bitcoin and from um, GameStop stock, or you can do it the slow way, the better way, by building a community and um, helping others along the way. Um and it's not just about the dollars and cents. It's about what the outcome is for the people you're serving. And uh, so I really, I, don't know, I really enjoy that. So that's a little bit about me and the business I started and what the goal is with that business. Um, I'll just talk a little bit to hear about my interests while we're on this topic. So... Obviously, I'm interested in fitness. I've gone from being interested in CrossFit, specifically as a subcategory, to weightlifting. I was on the starting strength method for a long time because I really didn't know what I was doing. I went over and became a big fan of Barbell Medicine uh, and their progressive overload scheme. And so now I'm doing a lot of their programming uh, for powerlifting. And right now I'm more on a hypertrophy uh program, which is basically a muscle building program, uh, to get me bigger because like I said, I'm a naturally skinny guy by disposition. Um, so I've, I've gone, I've hit all areas of the spectrum from hit training all the way to like big boy powerlifting training. And, uh, I really want to, I really want to visit a powerlifting meet at some point. I know they've been shut down because of COVID, but, um, I really want to go and see one in person because I just think the atmosphere is really exciting and it might even be fun to compete at some point. Um, this is all the, the stuff that I've been able to think about and be able to do having started our own business and now having a lot more available time or flexible time on my hands. Um, the other nice thing about being in business for yourself, particularly in this space, is um, home gym life. I love... I love the the lifestyle around home gyms, if you can describe it that way. Uh, we started our own home gym when the pandemic got going, and it was obviously a little hard to find certain pieces of equipment, um, but we got on it pretty early on. So I'll have to, at some point, I, I think I've got a, some training videos on our Instagram and our uh, TikTok pages, but... Um, you can kind of see our home gym set up. It's a, a Titan power rack. It's the X3 rack. It's a three by three rack. It's glorious. It's got all the, all the bells and whistles, all the goodies. And then a few bars that we picked up here and there, um, through Craigslist and, and wherever else. Um, but I, I love, I love home gyms and I just think it's, I think it's the future. 
So Coop from Garage Gym Reviews has talked about this, and so has Alan Thrall from Untamed Strength in California. And those guys go back and forth about our home gyms the future or our commercial gyms the future. And and to me, it's still going to be a mix of both, but the percentage of people in home gyms has definitely gone up permanently, not just temporarily. There's a there's always a community, there's a community aspect to fitness in general, but there's a huge community aspect to home gyms just as much in my mind as you know, commercial gyms. I mean, yeah, you go see your buddy at the at the big box gym and you work out for a while, but you've also sacrificed an hour of drive time and prep and getting there and getting changed and taking a shower and getting back home. Whereas if you're in a home gym, because we're in a digital age, everybody can connect with each other and post their training videos and like interact with each other completely digitally. And you almost get the same kind of feel as being in a commercial gym, just without the physical presence, obviously. But even then, I work out with a training partner. Um, He hasn't been with me for the past couple of weeks, uh, but... uh, you know, if you live close by in a neighborhood where you've got some really good buddies of you or friends of yours, um, you can get them, invite them to your home gym and just start a, a workout group or just get a training partner. And uh, people love that stuff um, if they're even thinking about getting active. So that's the community that I love um, in the home gym space. And I, like I said, I think it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger as time goes on. Uh, Rogue and Rep Fitness and Titan and Strength Co. and Kabuki and all the, like, they're all built around that residential home gym community. Um, They have, yes, they have their extensions into the commercial gym space, but I feel like that their primary business is, you know, geared towards residential lifters. Um, They probably make more money by selling to you know, businesses and commercial gyms, but uh, I I feel like that landscape has forever changed and it, I, I don't think there's any going back. But, I, I, you know, from reviews to, you know, home workout videos and all the equipment and goodies you can get and all the gadgets, like I love, I love it all. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I talk about that on social. Um, I talk about different ways that people can, use and be flexible with their equipment. And if people come into our store, I try to advise them on different ways that they can use gym equipment, whether they need a minimal setup or whether they need something that's, you know, full blown and all the bells and whistles. Cause there's always, there's something for everybody in the home gym space. Whereas, you know, with a commercial gym, you've really got to choose <clears throat> your gyms wisely. If you're a powerlifter, you go to powerlifter gym. If you're a crossfitter, you go to crossfit box. If you go, if you're into yoga, you go to yoga studio. With a home gym, it's like it can be whatever you want at any point, and it can have all of the stuff that you want. It's not like it's an all-in-one solution. Um, with a commercial gym, you're you're it's one thing. Like it's built for one type of person, whether it be general population just looking at weightlifting or yoga or, like I said, any number of those other types of people. Um, Planet Fitness is built for people who love pizza. I know I just triggered half the audience, but, you know, it's not, they, they advertise themselves as not being a gym. So I feel like I can rag on them a little bit. Um, but no, I, I'm kidding. Um, any, any, any gym like that that encourages people to get active, I'm still a fan of because I've used Planet Fitness even and you know, it, it may not have the most ideal setup and equipment, but it's inexpensive, it's readily available, and especially if you're traveling, it's a great option. So, but yeah, home gyms, phenomenal. And I'd encourage those who are listening to this podcast right now, if you haven't got in on home gym life, if you don't have a space, figure out a way to get a space or figure out a way to flex the current space that you have to put something in. Um, one of the things we want to offer here soon, and we're going we're to be offering here soon, is a pulley system that is essentially going to be a full replacement for a cable, a weighted cable system. So you can ideally 
uh, do lat pull downs and rows and cable crossovers and all that stuff with just a couple of pieces of equipment that you know we'll have available and in the comfort of your own home that's easily stored. Um, and so you know again if you don't have this excuse me if you don't have the space that there there it doesn't really matter how many kids you have or what kind of whether you're in a small apartment if you have something that's easily stored and put away you have space for you know fitness equipment and and a lot of these guys you know um let me think i think it's prx that has all of that compact fold away type gym equipment that's a genius concept i, lo- I love that kind of stuff um i love the those kinds of innovations in as much as they're real innovations in the fitness space and the gym space, just cause, um, it, it lets people have workout equipment if they're tight on space. Um, but no, I, I think everybody's home can become a home gym. Uh, it may not look like it from the outside, but I, I really think it can. And even if you don't, if you truly don't have the room, Finding a tree and hooking something up to it um, outside that's weather resistant um, will do just as well. Uh, even calisthenics, which is a pure body weight exercises, um, you know, is an option. And that becomes your home gym space, your home gym environment. And as you grow more into that, you know, it doesn't matter if you're in New York or in Colorado. Um, you can You can build it up a little bit more over time. Again, I know people. Some people have space restrictions, so this is not, you know, downplaying that. But yeah, I think it's a, I think it's an awesome community, and so I'm excited to be a part of it. Um, one thing I will mention, um, just as a quick plug, our website does have two free 90 day programs uh, around body weight exercises, and then. Uh, dumbbell exercises, so minimal equipment. Um, if you're interested in either of those, you can go to freedomfitnessequipment.com and it's free to download. It's all yours. Um, no charge. Uh, so if you guys have any feedback about that or are interested in the program, just go to freedomfitnessequipment.com. It's all right there. All right, so that's a little bit about me and um, the things I'm interested in, particularly in the fitness and and gym space and getting healthy and staying active and all that all that good stuff uh me personally i'm actually um from canada (laughs) i'm a big fan of hot sauce you'll notice that in a lot of our social uh videos that i've posted um i like it really really hot in fact trying to see if i have anything here Hang on one second. I'm going to pull something from my kitchen. Okay. So what you're seeing here, I don't know if you can see in the camera, is Wicked Tickle. It's a ghost pepper sauce. It says, world-class heat, deliciously painful. Um, this is the kind of stuff I love. This bad boy is 2 million Scoville, and I have it on my eggs in the morning. Um, That might seem extreme for some of you guys, but honestly, it makes boring food exciting. (laughs) I know that's a little of an understatement, but, you know, if if you're, I've mentioned this before, but if if you're on a cut and all of your food tastes just like hot garbage, doing something like this or adding spices is actually a really good way to make your food more enjoyable. And so I really like this. I like most hot sauce, ghost pepper in particular, and uh, this just really makes my day. So anyway, that's just a weird thing that I'm a big fan of. I want to have a hot sauce contest, kind of like they have on, I don't know if you guys have heard of Hot Ones, but I aspire to complete the full wing challenge all the way up through whatever the hottest version is, like triple X. So, yeah, I love hot sauce. Like reading and uh, just in my spare time playing games with friends of ours, board games specifically. I'm a big, 
I'm a closet nerd or maybe not so closet nerd. So I really enjoy, uh, you know, Gloomhaven. I'm looking at our uh, shelf full of games right now. We have Gloomhaven and Who Goes There and uh, Settlers of Catan and Terraforming Mars and Carcassonne. Uh, we really, we, you know, I wasn't really that into board games. I thought board games were Monopoly, Scrabble, that kind of stuff. Somebody introduced us to this whole new world of board games. It was just phenomenal. Um, one of the first, my first love from that new era was zomb- a game called Zombicide, which is basically, a co- most of these are cooperative games where you're working with your teammates in order to accomplish some mission. In this case, you're working against zombies to either kill the zombie horde or accomplish the mission goals uh, and get out of there in time before you get eaten alive, essentially. And man, um, I had no idea this stuff was out there, but you've got they've got minifigures you can paint and a whole map, multiple map setups, and, you know, like some of a storyline, some backstory to these characters. And then uh, games like Gloomhaven are even deeper. Like they actually have a plot to the whole game that you play through as you level up your character. Again, minifigures and a map and the whole, you know, movement restrictions and rules. I just love that kind of stuff. It seems complicated, but once you get into it, it's really, some of these are more straightforward than others, but Zombicide's really good. Um, so I re- anyway, not necessarily fitness related, but just something I'm really, I really dig. And it just helps take my mind off of other things, off of work and um, really helps me to just wind down. So it's a good de-stress tool that I use in my arsenal. Uh, for that kind of stuff. So well, that's a little bit about me. I hope that uh, provide you a little bit of context and really what we're, the point of this podcast is just what, like I said at the top to interview different business owners in this space. Um, I want to interview people who have helped others to get active. It could be a gym owner. It could be uh, a personal trainer. It could be a nutritionist. It could be somebody who's really motivating others. Um, you know, any number of things uh, where they're helping others to become active. And so we've got a lot of flexibility with this podcast, but I'm really hoping it just, I don't know, uh, helps you to, to, to do the same, to become more active, have fun doing it, just become more awesome. And uh, we'll create this little community within a community. Um, I love you guys in the, in the home gym space. And uh, I'm really hoping this is motivating and encouraging for you guys. Um, even through this pandemic and beyond. Um, So we'll have a lot of guests. Uh, We'll probably start, because we're based here in Charlotte, Um, we'll probably start here with a lot of folks in the Charlotte region. And then um, as we grow and as we go further, we'll uh, expand nationally. But um, really excited with this first episode to introduce myself, what I do, and what the goal is here. So really appreciate everybody who's listening to this podcast. Um, I apologize if this was a train wreck, but I was just kind of free flowing it and trying to give you guys a sense of who I am and um, what I really enjoy. So um, hope we can find some things in common and uh, I really appreciate you guys listening. Freedom Cast is based in Charlotte, North Carolina Metro. If you'd like to be a guest, please reach out at freedomfitnessequipment.com and click on the Contact Us page. Thanks for tuning in.